Hello everyone. So, today we have with us Dr. Linda Spilker. She is from JPL and uh, she has been involved from NASA Cassini mission and Voyager mission as well. She is one of the person I have been always look up and try to get inspired throughout my career till now and she has won numerous NASA and ESA award for her, her exceptional science contribution and I am so happy and glad to welcome her today in our interview show. So, thank you so much for agreeing for this wonderful series and taking time from your busy schedule. You are very welcome, <laughs> Ruti, very welcome. Thank you so much. So, usually I just ask um, this uh, start with the uh, missions which you are usually involved and I have was just you have been involved from your or do you want some background how I got started in space you know where yes. I got here today or yes that would be lovely yeah just, just to start there and then we can branch out into more detail about Cassini Absolutely. and Voyager and so I, a lot of times I get asked how did I get involved yep. in working <laughs> on Voyager and Cassini and it really goes back to that time in 1969 started growing up in the 60s watching those early space missions with Gemini and Apollo and finally watching a man actually walk on the moon and I can tell you to this day where I was sitting next to my dad on the couch yep. watching that grainy black and white picture and from that moment on I said I want to do something in space mm -hmm. and as I was growing up I thought well maybe I want to be an astronaut Ooh. but I loved astronomy. I had a little telescope when I was in third grade. I used it to look at Jupiter and Saturn. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what would be great? I could be an astronaut and an astronomer. And when they build that base on the far side of the moon and the telescope, then I could go there and run the telescope. But of course, we're not quite there yet. So growing up, I took lots of math and science classes mm -hmm. and then got a degree in physics, a master's in physics. And actually, uh, uh, then along came an opportunity to work at JPL. Mm -hmm. And when I first started, they said, do you want to work on this mission called Viking, an extended mission on Mars, yep. or Voyager? And so mm. I said, where's Voyager going? And they said, well, Jupiter and Saturn, and if all goes well, on Tyrannus and Neptune. I said, sign me up. Uh -huh. I, yeah, I can go explore these little worlds that I saw through my telescope and, and be one of the first people to see the moons up close, see what the rings look like. And so that started my career on Voyager. While I was working on Voyager, I actually went back to school, got my PhD using Voyager data of oh. Saturn's rings. Oh, wow. And it was just it was just incredible because I really wanted to continue as a scientist and so a PhD was very useful. And mm -hmm. as Voyager was winding down, then along came this new mission called Cassini. Yes. an orbiter to go back to Saturn and with these great rings. And so I worked with a team of scientists on a proposal mm -hmm. for a composite infrared spectrometer in the near and far mm -hmm. infrared. Mm -hmm. And I was their ring scientist. You know, I'd worked with them. And then as the, the time went on, I evolved from deputy project scientist to the last decade of the mission, mm -hmm. uh, the project scientist overseeing all of the science and coordinating with the other teams the science for the entire mission. So just wonderful to s think about starting out looking through the telescope cool. to actually going there yes. and seeing these worlds. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's something really incredible journey. I'm just like I, I could see the whole, you know, I can visualize those things in my mind when you are sharing it. So I, I remember there's this Voyager and Cassini. These are two, the mi two of the missions which changed the course of planetary science, how we Absolutely. study planets, how Absolutely. we see them. And you have been one of the luckiest person, I would say. I would say been right place, with right that. time. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, did you feel any challenges throughout these missions? Because these were the missions we we have never been over there, and there are like hundred types of complications. So, when these kind of challenges come over, how did you manage to you know keep your motivation? And how did you still try to like used to push yourself during those, those tough times? Right, well, well, a lot of the challenge is it really then takes a team. Mm -hmm. You have to work together as a team to find the very best solutions. Yeah. And as I was working on Voyager, one of the challenges is, you know, I, I was young and I wanted to have a family. Mm -hmm. So where do you have children? And so I looked at the Voyager timeline <laughs> and I noticed there was a five-year window between the Saturn flybys mm -hmm. in the 1980s 
and yeah. Uranus in 1986, five years. Yeah. So I decided that's the time to start my family. Oh, really? <laughs> so <laughs> I have, I have two daughters. They were okay. born in that five-year window. And oh, I tell them, wow. your births are based on the alignment of the planets oh. as seen through the eyes of Voyager. And I, was, I wasn't the only one. There were other Voyager moms mm -hmm. who also saw that window as yeah. an opportunity. And so as we, we would get together, we'd play softball and everything. Oh, we'd, yeah. we'd bring our kids, they'd play together, we'd play softball. And so, That's you nice. know, that, that was one of the challenges. And also trying to balance work-life balance. Yeah. How do you make sure that you spend the right amount of time with your family, yeah. really, because it's so easy when the work is exciting and these events happen one after the other mm -hmm. to have to plan time for family. It's really, yeah, and, and so it's really learning to say no because there'll always be more things that she'll get asked to do and mm -hmm. it's just to look carefully and to say no and then not and don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. To say look I have all okay. these things to do can someone help, help me, me okay. to, to get it all completed. This is really something good advice because sometimes you know we get a little bit of shy probably or you know don't have like courage to stand up and you know say that yeah I need help or I'm not feeling it great but this is something really a great pe piece of advice which I would really like to follow. Right. And, 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 and for women you. sometimes it's yeah. so hard too because you want to look really really professional and do everything yes. just right yeah. and so sometimes that's hard to have to step back and say I have too much on my plate you know I need to spend more time with my family yeah. you know these other things in my life and to say, hey, you know, I need, I need some help and, and bring that in. This is really something good to share that you shared with us. And I know that other than science throughout your career, you are also heavily involved with the science communication and, you know, try to reach out people and try to also encourage women to become part of the science. So how you feel uh, that is also important and how in your view it has affected uh, the coming generations. Just yeah, well I feel, feel that outreach is so important mm -hmm. to communicate the excitement in exploring these various worlds and especially to encourage young women and young men mm -hmm. to go into science and math and engineering and technology degree, you yeah. know, get degrees in those fields. And part of that's bringing that excitement and, and sharing your interests in it and just being encouraging, being a mentor. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of postdocs and students along the way, you know, reaching out, being a mentor and sort of like spreading this excitement, spreading the word. It's great. Yeah. Science is fun. Yeah, it's great yeah. to be there. Thank you. Yeah. And as you said, um, you have been with a lot of PhDs and postdoc. So now it's been almost 40 years since you are at JPL. So how do you change, how do you see the change in term when you see the students which were coming up during those times and before 40 years back and the students who are coming with you and discussing the things with you now, like how do you see their, you know, their mentality, their approach for the science, how those things has been changed in, in your opinion? In the 40 years I've been at JPL, one of the biggest changes is that often I would go into meetings, mm -hmm. especially science meetings, I would be the only woman in the room. Oh, that's the, the team that I worked with, they were great. Uh, we'd go back, we'd have meetings several times a year. Mm -hmm. I would be the only woman at the meeting and I would come in and I would have my agenda and my job was to listen to them and turn what they wanted mm -hmm. into commands that the spacecraft could execute and observations okay. we could make with Voyager. And fast forward 40 years and now I look around and there's so many women in the room, women on teams, you know, women scientists and so that's very nice. There's this community that's grown up as mm -hmm. we have more planetary scientists and as the percent of women has increased I think in planetary science mm -hmm. as well. And that just means there are more women students at all levels true, that are coming true. through yeah, yeah. the system. Okay, yeah, that's that's really good to know, and also that um, how those things. So I, I've been seeing you. You are still involved with various missions, trying to keep updated, trying to get involved, and uh, probably you have more than you know hundred things even today. So yeah. even though you have spent forty years, you are still that much motivated and that much energetic, and trying uh, very happy to try new things. How do you still keep your motivation up? Right. Well, it, there's still so much to do. Yeah. If you look at Voyager and Cassini, we answered a long list of questions. Yeah. 
but there are yeah. so many more questions that remain unanswered. Mm -hmm. And a couple of my favorites are, what about the ice giants Uranus, Uranus and Neptune? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Uranus and Neptune with orbiters like Cassini and make discoveries and understand these pieces of the puzzle in our solar system that relate to exoplanets as yeah. well. And then one of my favorites was Enceladus, this tiny moon with a liquid water ocean under its icy crust, jets coming out of its south pole. Oh yeah, that is lovely. It's just That's incredible. Really and could there be life in that ocean? So I'm working with a, a team of young scientists to think about the instruments that you'd use. There's one that's called eels. It looks like a sort of like a snake to spiral down into a vent or, or to take heat and melt through the surface. Yeah with the goal of getting down to the ocean. So mm -hmm. I'm very excited about working on this next generation of missions to go back to an ocean world, oh, possibly wow. Enceladus, yeah. and see if there really <laughs> might be life there. That's so this incredible. Amazing. I'm, I'm so happy to hear your stories. And just before we are closing it, what advice you would like to give to today's student, like master students, early careers to, you know, who are in this field, like what would be your suggestion for them to thrive in this field, in, 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 in our planetary science field? Yeah, I think, you know, try a lot of things. Don't be yep. afraid to, you know, have internships, try mm -hmm. different kinds of careers for the summer, yeah. and then find out what you're passionate about. Okay. Follow your dream, because that <laughs> just makes it so much easier if you look forward to what you're doing yeah. and look forward to going to work every day. Well, that's a really wonderful piece of advice, which I will surely take it from you. Uh, thank you so much for sitting with us today. I'm, I was so glad to hear your whole journey. I mean, I, I could literally get the goosebumps when you <laughs> talk about the Apollo missions and your struggle with Voyager and Cassini. So I'm really happy to have with you us today. And thank you so much. Thank very you very much. Very happy to be here. Thank you.